praise be to Jesus. Today is Good Friday. We will celebrate the passion of Christ. And the basic symbol there is the cross. I'm going to say a few words about the cross. Why the cross may be said to be a holy semantic symbol. I will explain. That is, is a place where many meanings are thrown together. Holy means many. Semantic or symbiosis of meanings of significations. If you look at a cross, you watch a cross. The symbol invokes many, many feelings. Might be the place the Lord was crucified. That feeling can come up. Might be, I give you a feeling of the kind of struggle between good and bad. It cannot be, can I also evoke the meaning that this is the suffering of an innocent person. So these are things that Together. But it's also a way the cross handles those feelings. I had a friend, friend in the United States. She had a bad marriage. So five times a day she would throw away the ring and would still go after it and pick it up. First, she would bring out the ring and tell you how they had a beautiful beautiful marriage, great years, then everything went badly wrong. The same ring became a, sim a symbol of oppression, of neglect, of disappointment, of betrayal. The cross puts all these different feelings together feeling of joy, of betrayal, of sin, of forgiveness, of restoration, of hopelessness. People in traditional theology will call it a place of coincidence of opposites. That's the kind of the way symbols work. The good and bad are thrown together. Just as we are here with some people, Great saints also capable of being sinners. A society of matriculated sinners, all of us here, we can be saints, we can also be sinners. I will come back to that later on. Something happened in the Garden of Eden. We lost it. Eve lost it, Adam lost it, all of us lost it. Disobedience reigned. You needed the same, the same garden to right the wrong. That's why it's a symbol. Going to be the antidote. The same garden that everything was lost. The same garden where Jesus was presented the same opportunity, he endured to the end and gained obedience in the same garden. The same place. They shall look on whom they have pierced. That's why Jesus then became a flat bearer, a symbol, a pelican. You remember the bird pelican? Pelican was a bird uh, had a very long, you know, beak. Pelican was a way to gather some food. On return, she found her chicks, you know, gasping for life. They were actually dying. So Pelican used her long beak to pierce her breast. So the, the uh, blood flowing from her breast, she used that to soak her chicks. They were revived, and Pelican died. That is Christ. 
he gave us, gave his life, covered us, gave all, didn't shy away because of suffering, so that we can have life and have it in abundance. In the beginning was the world. The world was with God. The world was life through. He gave all. Well, they come the word that. In fact, it's not the symbol you see around many places, the blessed sacrament is blessed. It's not the symbol of somewhat the Holy Spirit, you know, that with arrows. It's not a big bird there. That's a pelican, the bird. So we, today we celebrate that single individual that bore it all, that followed to the end so that we can begin paradise. There is another irony in the Gospel of John, very, very ironic. The big one. We are people mean one thing, the end of bringing out another. But it's, the Gospel of John is very, very full of this kind of ironies. I'll give you an example. We should go back to the encounter between Jesus and Nicodemus. Jesus talked about the river. Nicodemus understood Jesus was saying that maybe I'll probably go back into my own school. Jesus said, no, you got it badly wrong. Remember the encounter with the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman. Jesus talked about water in He said, are you greater than our ancestor Abraham who gave us water? He wasn't talking about the material water. He talked about the bread of life. They were thinking about the bread they ate in the desert. It wasn't that bread. John is full of faith. This understanding played out in, <coughs> in judging Jesus. In judging Jesus. Remember the guy, Peter, who was supposed to give faith, lost the faith, and did the wrong thing. So he struck the servant. That's not what was demanded from Peter. It was faith. But look at how that judgment is against Jewish jurisprudence, actually. Because in judgment, you had the high priest there, you had the criminal in the middle, and the people on the other side. If you listen carefully, it was Pilate who was in the middle. It was not Jesus. The high priest was there, Pilate in the middle, Jesus here. It wasn't actually Jesus who was under persecution. It was Pilate also. Because if Jesus were the criminal, he would have been in the middle. Pilate was shuffling back and forth between Jesus and the high priest, trying to take a position. That is not Jewish jurisprudence. So at the end of the day, whom did the judge? We shot ourselves on the feet. Who were the criminals? It wasn't Jesus. It was Pilate representing us. And look at the kind of choice we also made. The politicians acquitted Jesus. And they said, I didn't find anything wrong with this man. The heads of the church. Us, bishop, priest, maybe not these ones. <laughs> Bishops, priests, no, two priests, said we want him dead. But it happens every day, you know. I don't know if you go to church or why. No, no, two priests, no, no. He said that confusion. We are bundles of contradiction. You see, the religious person has a very short memory. That we come here every day, kneel and place. It doesn't solve the whole problem. We need to pray in every day. Because we are like time bomb. We cannot do. And at the same time, the potential that we did in, the members of the church said, no, this man must die. Those characters represented all of us. 
That irony. They thought they were persecuting the criminal, but ended up judging themselves, criminalizing themselves. The, the true criminal is us, not Jesus. And what was at stake was truth. Anyway, he didn't say what it is. What was the truth? Now, when I said earlier that when a society of matriculated sinners, you know, it doesn't mean that uh, we are a perfect group. But it's a place where the, everything can be harmonized in that uh, great insufficiency or imperfection that has to some kind of harmony. Let me end by telling you a story how uh, this uh, Church of Christ harmonizes all of us with our great talent. At the end of the day, it was the thief who stole paradise. Ordinarily, the thief would have been condemned. But they chose the criminal over the right man. There was a story about a princess who was very choosy. She couldn't make up her mind over her business. And the king said, look, if any young man attracts the, the fancy of the princess, that he was going to def uh, divide his kingdom into two and give him one. So the king was broke as everywhere. Remember, this is a story. It was such that even the animals under the sea understood that and heard it. The sea piped on head of that. She went and borrowed all kinds of human character, human characteristics, all kinds of human things. With his own comfort, they landed at the palace. And the princess was in love. You know those kinds of people who come the same day and pay the bright price? A lot more dangerous. <laughs> but they just pay, Madame, they make it in Naira, they pay immediately. So the python came pay them in everything. And the king kept his word and they left. And with their own escort. But when they got to the sea, the python what became what it was, disappeared. Hmm. They disappeared. So what Saying to the king that the princess had disappeared with the coin, that actually the son in law was a python, a sea python. So, what did the king do? He said, he said Okay, no, no, harm. He decided, he made a visibility study and brought out a, a, a team to go and rescue the princess. In that team, you had a boat driver, you had a carpenter, you had a um, a thief, a diviner, a hunter. So they left. So when they go to the sea, the diviner divined, you know, with his six eyes. So the thief went in, stole the princess, and handed the princess over to the swimmer who swore. And then at the time, the python got up, began to pursue them. The hunt are fire. Ta -ta 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 -ta. But at the point, the python struck the, broke the, the boat. So the carpenter, you know, put the pieces in there. <laughs> so they landed. They landed, and the, the uh, princess was brought home safe and sound. But the issue was who was to marry the princess? The boatman said, if I hadn't dreamed, he would have all been dead. The captain said, supposing I left that for this, it would have been, you know, right? So the thief said, if I hadn't gone into the house quietly and stole the princess, we have made it. All of them had great essential contribution to make. So what the, prince, what the king did was to assume, uh, absorb all of them into his cabinet. Hmm. 
Anna Lumo, Anna Lumo. So no one qualified. The princess was there. He couldn't be given out to any single man. But those talents got their post in the king's cabinet, like this cabinet. We have flips, all kinds of things, great magicians, great everything. <laughs> And we are here before God. He keeps managing us. The kingdom of God is not a realize that it's not a perfect place, but he keeps managing those contradictions in us. Those contradictions that brought about the crucifixion of Jesus. But we have a symbol, some person we can follow who teaches us that it is possible to be faithful to the end in spite of suffering and difficulty. After each day, we look at the cross, call upon him that since he testified, Jesus testified, it is possible. The same cross was a symbol of weakness, rejection, is a power that radiates love. Forgiveness, steadfastness, reconciliation, restoration. We want to be restored by the grace that comes from the cross. We want to be healed by the power that flows from the cross. And we want to be forgiven by that pace setter. Hebrew said the pace setter has come to the world of the human minister. That is, Jesus, by his death, he has two passports now, if he needed any anywhere. He belongs to God. He belongs to the human. But that is why he can apply. If you pray to him, he will answer. He was one like us. He suffered everything but sin. So he understands. And if he goes to God, remember he came from God. He is his son. That is why in him we have the best bet. No other person can intercede better. No other person can understand us better than the crucified Jesus, in whom there is forgiveness. So let us look on that person who is crucified. That symbol of weakness, of defeat, is a powerful symbol. At that time, we think we have been defeated. People talk about theology of failure. At that point, we think we have failed. God comes to pick us up, to show us the way. May Jesus continue to be a flag bearer, a visitor, the person who takes us to the kingdom. Praise be to Jesus.